before we begin, I want you to look around and find as many types of metals as you can in the classroom and write them down on your worksheet. I'm sure you found a lot of items that are made of metals. Just looking around, I see my belt buckle, my computer, my desk, the zipper of my jeans. You can't see it, but there are so many types of metals in your phone. Do you wear a ring or necklace? Metals are everywhere in your life. Go walk around outside and you'll see cars and buildings that are made of metals. You'll see telephone poles and cables running everywhere. Even if a house is made of wood, you know what the nails and screws used to build a house are made of? Metals. We as humans really depend on metals, don't you think? What really fascinates me is that when you go hiking in nature, you don't typically see shiny metals, right? So during the course of human history, we discovered metals and learned how to extract pure shiny metals from rocks. I mean, how did we even invent the technique? Humans are amazing. In this video, I will show you a very brief history of metals and how we've discovered and used metals as tools. Back in the primitive days, the dawn of humans, tens of thousands of years ago, what do you think humans used as tool materials? You know, if I were to be left on a remote island, I would use rocks, wood, animal bones and skins, and shells. Now that's what humans back in the days did too. This period in human history is called the Stone Age. Like I said earlier, you don't usually find metals lying around in nature. So humans didn't use metals all that much during the Stone Age. But they did use some metals. These metals include gold, silver, and copper. Do you want to guess why they use these metals? Gold, silver, and copper? They didn't use them because they were pretty. They just found them lying around in nature. It's because these metals, gold, silver, and copper, don't like to react with other substances. They are not reactive. So they often exist as pure shiny metals in nature. They exist as pure elements, gold, silver, and copper. Using a handheld metal detector, the prospector, who has remained unidentified, uncovered a gold nugget Wednesday weighing in at a whopping 11 pounds. The owner of the mining exchange gold shop, Cordell Kent, told the Ballarat Courier the prospector was only hoping to catch a one-ounce piece of gold and was very happy to find more. He found this little area first, then he cleaned off the dirt around it and went, wow, that's cool. And then he cleaned off more off this side and it just kept on going and going. The nugget has been valued at $300,000, but Kent expects that number to be higher, depending on the market value. Kent told Adelaide now the mystery miner plans to pay off a lot of bills and his house with the money he makes from selling the gold. When you find gold in nature, it's already shiny and metallic and looks just like gold. People back in the days didn't have to invent any sophisticated technique to extract these metals. That's why these metals have been used by humans since the Stone Age. The Stone Age lasted for millions of years. Gold and silver were rare nonetheless, but copper was relatively abundant. So humans were using copper since the Stone Age. Copper really contributed to many of the ancient cultures, including Mesopotamia, Egypt, Greece, Rome, Indus, and 
China. They started using copper instead of stone to produce weapons. They would heat up the metal, melt it, and pour it in the mold to make swords, shields, and armors. So by that time, humans were experimenting with other types of metals as well. They knew that heating rocks with fire often produced pure metals. This technique is called smelting. And such metals as tin and lead can be easily produced by smelting. And at some point, around 5000 BC, someone discovered, probably accidentally, that copper becomes a lot harder when mixed it with tin, another metal. The mixture of copper and tin is called bronze, and it became really popular all over the world because it was stronger than pure copper. And it was used mainly to create stronger weapons. And this era is called the Bronze Age and lasted for a couple of millennia until the next era, the Iron Age, started around 1500 BC. The Iron Age, as the name suggests, was the period of time when people made tools of iron. I probably don't even have to mention this, but iron is stronger than bronze. That's why it became popular. Stronger weapons. Another benefit of iron is that iron is one of the most abundant elements in the Earth's crust. You can find rocks that contain iron pretty much anywhere in the world. If iron was so common, Why do you think it didn't become popular until recently? Two reasons. One, remember gold and silver and copper are not reactive? So we find these elements as pure metals in nature. However, iron is a relatively reactive metal. You don't usually find pure iron in nature. Iron typically exists as iron oxide. It's a compound of iron and oxygen. Iron atoms are bonded with oxygen atoms because iron is reactive. The second reason is that to remove the oxygen from iron oxide to have its pure iron metal, it requires a smelting process that's more involved. It needs a higher temperature. So it took a while for humans to develop the technique of iron working. Still, even today, iron is the most widely used of all the metals and makes up more than 90% of metal production in the entire world. It's cheap and strong. We use iron in many applications. Such as machine tools, cars, ships, and buildings. This is a little bit off topic, but let's take a look at this picture. What are these power poles and cables are made of? Some kind of metal. Do you ever wonder what if you can make a pile of metals that humans all over the world use in one place? I wonder how big the pile is. But more than that, you see, these metals have to come from somewhere. Where? From the ground. It's pretty destructive. If I live there, and if someone starts digging the ground like that, I would be pretty upset. But as long as I use products that contain metals, I am creating the demand. So it makes me think. I'm just a hypocrite. But I think it's important to know what goes on outside of our bubble sometimes because our lifestyle, whether you care or not, has a huge impact on other people's lives. Anyways, here is the summary of this video. Some metals are reactive, like iron, and some are not reactive, like Gold. This is really important 
we will come back to this concept over and over for the rest of the unit. So let me repeat. Some metals are reactive and some are not. When the metal is not reactive, like gold, it usually exists as a pure elemental metal. It doesn't want to react with anything, right? On the other hand, most of the metals are reactive and found as combined forms or ionic compounds. Because they are reactive, they're combined with other elements and found as rocks, not pure metals. We call these rocks ores. For example, this rock. What metal do you think this rock contains? This rock is called bauxite, and we extract aluminum from this ore. Isn't that amazing? When we mine for metals, we don't go look for pure metals. We go look for ores that contain metals. Then we extract pure metals out of the ores. In the future lessons, you will mimic this process and you will extract pure metal from ionic compounds.